Welcome to EduPlanet 21's 10 Minute Tuesdays, a series of conversations with experts in education. My name is Claire Coop Scott and I'm with the content team at EduPlanet 21. We're excited to be speaking with instructional leaders from Hampton Township School District in Pennsylvania about their approach to professional development. I'd like to welcome Dr. Michael Lawhead, Superintendent of Schools, and Dr. Jackie Ramochek, Director of Curriculum Instruction and Assessment to the conversation. Welcome back. Thank you. Thank you. Glad to be here. So um, can you begin by sharing with uh, me your approach to professional development and how it's changed over time? Well, I'll, I'll just give you the kind of the superintendent's view in, in that, um, you know, we are asking our teachers to teach differently in the classroom. Uh, we're asking them to engage students, uh, to uh, have students um, involved in the design of the, of the lessons to a certain degree, uh, to do more project-based learning work, and that assessments and tasks be meaningful and clearly related to essential questions. So, you know, the reality is if that's what we're asking our teachers and our students to do, shouldn't we be modeling that in the way that we do professional development? And uh, for too long in, in public education, uh, we haven't. Uh, we have done a large scale, you know, lectures um, and, um, delivering content to folks once or twice or three times a year. And we you know, that's just not effective. It's also not modeling uh, good adult learning, and it certainly isn't uh, modeling what we want our teachers to be doing with their students. So that has you know, been something that we've been working on uh, here uh, at, at Hampton, uh, trying to reinvent the way we do professional development uh, so that it truly reflects what we expect our teachers to be doing uh, and that the content that we're delivering um, they we're also looking at the process uh, of how we deliver that so we can kind of model what we expect our teachers to do. The other piece too is we've been able to and, and continue to um, want to tap into our teachers expertise and allow them to lead some of the learning. Um, so we've been able to offer some professional development sessions throughout the district where teachers are leading it, where they're sharing some of the best practices that they've encountered in the classroom. Um, and we're a we actually offer it almost like a workshop uh, or conference style where the teachers can sign up and choose the sessions that they want to attend of their peers. Um, and we've even had the experience where we've had students leading some of the PD with the teachers and teaching other students. So the more that we can do to embrace that and to give our, our teachers some choice as well in their own professional learning, um, you know, all sort of encompassed under the umbrella of what the district goals are is, is really the focus and the work that we continue to um, ponder on how we can do that in the best way. That's great. And one of the things I've heard you talk about, Jackie, is snow day PD. Can you can you talk tell us about that? Sure. Um, so I don't know if you want to kind of go into the. Well, it's it's interesting. In, in negotiations a few years ago with the current uh, contract uh, that we work under with our, pro our professional teaching uh, staff is that, that there would be an opportunity uh, after a period of of snow days that instead of just continuing to make up those days at the end of the year, that there'd also be opportunities during those days that faculty would do some professional development. Um, and it was a, uh, I really appreciate the fact that that was included in the contract because it helped us move, I think, into this space of professional development can be done in different ways. Uh, and some of it can be done quite effectively uh, online uh, and we should embrace that. So it allowed us to step into that space. Uh, there was some frustration, I think, with uh, how that was going to happen. And uh, I think uh, it put us into uh, a different world of PD that we needed to move into. Uh, and uh, uh, we made some progress with it. Yeah. And so that's probably our, I want to say, our first um, bigger uh, attempt as a district and, and having our folks and driving our folks to the online professional development. Um, and for, I think we're in two snow days that this has mm -hmm. two different years that this has happened. Um, but for the first one, we actually had one of our teachers create uh, a learning path and online learning experience um, around one of the district goals at the time so that all folks could engage in that. It was something that we knew we needed to do. Um, and we were able to kind of execute it through that snow day professional development. Can you talk a little bit more about how you've leveraged the learning paths um, through EduPlanet 21's um, uh, program and solution? Yeah, um, we've done, so there's a few of them that we've done through um, sort of the more compliance 
um, pieces that we need to do, the professional development. So like the Act 71, we had our teachers engage in that, uh, I want to say about two or three years ago. Um, also the mandated reporter training, we actually created a learning path this past year for our folks to engage in um, the components for uh, our district for the mandated uh, reporter training. Um, and we've been able to use it in a way. So in our district, we have these extended days, which are really sort of this after school chunk of time for professional development um, that are about two hours total with a prep time, one and a half sort of, um, one and a half hours of face-to-face -face time. Um, but what we've been able to do is allow folks to say, you can use those um, learning paths and, and you create, or you can go ahead and engage in doing the work of those learning paths during the extended daytime. Um, it's allowed for more flexibility for our teachers um, rather than sitting there then after school for that hour and a half. And then the other piece too of it is we're able to do it that way versus use the professional development days. So what would be three hours of professional development day for the Act 126 training, we're able to kind of use in a more flexible way so we can um, use the professional development time to kind of get into those bigger conversations like understanding by design or other curriculum and assessment work that typically take big chunks of time, like at least three hours or a day. Mm -hmm. That's great. So what are the, some of the lessons that you've learned um, in moving from more traditional professional development to how you've set it up now? Again, from a, a strategic and leadership point of view, the, how you introduce it and uh, how it's um, started is very important. I mean, I was, I'm appreciative of the fact that it was in the contract when I came here that this was an expectation. Uh, at the same time, uh, there was a lot of frustration about it. And um, you know, I think that at the, end, at the onset, I think that one of the most positive ways of starting something like this is doing it in a cooperative, uh, voluntary way, um, rather than forcing it through a contract. Uh, you, you know, you can do that, and I'm glad it was there, but I also think that there was a lot of um, um, consternation about that. And I think that once folks start doing this and they see the power of it, you know, it would, it would, it'll gain a life of its own. So that, that's something I think might have been done differently. Uh, and I would encourage folks, if you're looking at starting something like this, uh, I wouldn't wait and implement it in a contract negotiation with your association. I would simply work with some of your teacher leaders to actually design the, the courses like we had done here and then initiate it. And, and I think you'll find folks that are saying, oh, this is so much better uh, I'm, I'm able to get some of these um, content delivery processes done uh, in a more efficient way, uh, and that will, that will spread. Uh, I think the other thing is you have to be careful about what types of PD you deliver in the online space, and uh, that you don't attempt to uh, do that to replace everything, uh, that there has to be some hands-on collaboration uh, it's almost like the flipped classroom model. You know, there's certain things you can flip and have students do uh, at home, but then when they're at school, you want to do team problem solving, collaboration work, things that require that human element and, and uh, interaction. Uh, so that, that's something I would say, you know, is the same thing about online professional development. You know, allow, do this so that you, when you have teachers together, they can do the collaborative work uh, that you want them to do. So how do you envision uh, professional development changing over the next five years in your district? What do you see as your future? I think that one of our goals is to strengthen those uh, and uh, be sure that the teams that are collaborating through PLCs now uh, have the space and time to do that, to do that work uh, and that they are able to guide some of their own learning uh, and that we turn some of that professional responsibility over to them, um, um, you know, that, that, that when it's too highly controlled, it, it centralized, uh, I think we lose some of that natural professional desire of staff uh, to do the work. And honestly, I've found that when you give th those staff the time and you set the challenge, they'll exceed it in most cases. The, the, the teachers are tremendously driven uh, to do what's best uh, if it's going to affect uh, their ability to improve learning in the classroom. So uh, some of those are some of our goals, uh, at least from a strategic standpoint. There's no question about it that a tool like EduPlanet um, in, in the fast paced changing world of education, uh, I, I don't know how you would do quality professional development without it. I, I think that um, you would be losing a 
not missing a whole opportunity to use a tool that allows you to do this differentiation uh, and gives teachers a voice and a place, uh, particularly if they can help develop some of the pathways uh, mm -hmm. and the courses. Uh, again, it's helping them model what we want our students to be doing. That's great. Any final thoughts, um, suggestions, best practices about professional development before we close? I, I would Jay, just say really spend time thinking carefully about those initiatives and the core work that you intend your staff to do and to go deeply into those and to find something for us it's been understanding by design that we have found that that and the Danielson framework everything that we do is can be aligned under those those two, those two initiatives and so kind of keeping that intense focus uh, over time and then finding flexible ways to differentiate using electronic online tools like EduPlanet um, I, I believe think that's that's the power uh, and the future of, of professional development. Well, thanks for joining me today and talking about uh, your approach to professional development at Hampton. Thank Our you. pleasure. Thank you.